Hey guys, welcome back to the Vote Manager 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another ghost jump scare tutorial, and in this one, it's going to be the ghost is running directly at the player. So it runs at the player and then disappears afterwards. So I'll show you what that's going to look like now. So as you saw, we walked into a certain area, it played a sound effect, and the ghost then ran at the player, and it is now gone as well. And if we walk back, we can't trigger this again. You can obviously make this faster for you, make it go a different length, different distance, again, go faster, slower, look different, anything like that. Obviously, your character will probably look better and have a better animation, as this is just a very quick one that I made in Fuse, like this, and then also got this animation from Mixmo. So it's not the best, so you can probably make this look a lot better. But this is just to give you the basic fundamentals. So I'll delete all this, and then I'll show you how to do it. So our first step, if you haven't already, is to create our ghost blueprint. So for me, I just duplicated the third person character or our player blueprint, do that by control C, control V, and then I simply just changed the mesh in here. So I selected it, changed the mesh to be my new skeletal mesh here for my female ghost one. And then the animation, I just want this to be constantly walking or running at the camera. So that's the only time you're gonna see it is when it's walking. So this is all I need. I don't need to make a blueprint thing. So I just changed it to use animation asset and I changed the anim to play for that one. And then I also looped it like that. Once we've done that, another thing we want to do is change the collision of this. So we, all we want to do is select the capsule component up here and then down the right, we want to go down and we find collision. And then here it will probably be uh, collision presets pawn. We're gonna change this to custom leave everything the same, but down here under pawn, we're gonna put ignore. And this basically means it will go through the player, so it won't get blocked by the player and then stop. This will then go through, which is what we want. So we can compile, save, and close that, as that is all we need to do there. Next, we're gonna open up the level blueprint. So we can go to blueprints, open level blueprint, and this is where we're gonna be doing the code. But first, what we need is a box collision, or a box trigger. So this is where the player is gonna be to trigger this event. So up in the top left, if we get a box trigger like so, just put this in the level wherever we want. Make sure to scale up to the correct size that we want. So I think for me, that's gonna be good. And remember, this is where the player is gonna pass through for it to then trigger this event. So I think that's gonna be good for me. Go back into the level blueprint, right click and get a begin overlap event of that trigger box there. So we can zoom in, get that. The other actor, we're gonna cast to our character. So for me, that is the third person character. And that is because we want our player to be the one triggering this. And then out of this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do as third person character, get the actor location, get actor location. And then what we're gonna do is come out of this, and we're gonna play sound at location. So this is just gonna play that jump scare sound effect you heard, and it's just gonna do it on the player. So then the sound, we can then pick any one we have. I've already got a jump scare sound effect, which I believe I got from freetime.org. So that works like that. So we can then use that. And what I'm gonna do is open it up to get to more advanced settings. And the start time, I'm gonna to set to 0.5 seconds as there's a bit of a delay at the start of this. So I just want it to start like that, where the actual jump scare is. Then after this, we're gonna come out of the play sound here and we're going to get all actors of class. So get all actors of class like that. With the actor class as our ghost blueprint so for me that's female ghost one bp out actors we're going to get a copy and now we're essentially casting to it so out of this what we're going to do is get the actor location get actor location like so and we're going to right click split structure pin that was right click on the return value and then we're going to come out of the get again and now we're going to set the actor location so set actor location plug that in there and again right click new location split structure pin the X and Y will be the same, so we go from get into set for the X and Y, and the Z, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we're gonna minimize this again, and now we're actually gonna put in our blueprint. So if we drag and drop in our female ghost one and BP there, rotate it to face the correct way, and what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put this underneath the map. So as you see, I already have a little thing down here, so I'm just gonna place this in the map down here, just so that it isn't already there where I want it. And you can also just set the visibility but I'm gonna be doing it this way instead as you might wanna do it differently because you might want the collision on or something like that. So I'm just putting it out of the way and I'm gonna be setting the location. So mine's down there, but if you have it back to where you want, you can get the Z there is 226. So down to the right here. So that's how high we want it to go. So I'll put it back down there, go back into the blueprint and set the Z to 226. And again, you can just set the visibility if you want. So I'll also show you how to do that. So if I just delete that and then come out of this and set visibility 
of the mesh like that, plug that in there, new visibility will be ticked. And then if I put this back up to where we would want it, and then just make this not visible. So scroll down on the right, or just search for visible mesh unvisible like that. And so now that would work the exact same way as well. And so our next step is to come up with the set visibility and we're gonna get an AI move to. So that one there, AI move to the pawn, we're gonna go into the get down here. So the get is that pawn there. The destination is where we'd want it to go. So if we minimize this again, so this is where it's gonna start. And I want it to just move down this corridor like so, roughly here to where the player is gonna be standing. So I'll put it to there. And then we can check the location down here. So then if I open this again, but make it a little bit smaller, just so I can then see the location down here as well. On the X, you can see it's minus 950. The Y is 1270 and the Z is 226. Now, obviously this will be different for you, but this is what it is for me. Just make sure that you have this location or the destination there as to where you want it to end up. So I have that, and now I'm just gonna move it back into the starting position I want it in. And open up the level blueprint again. So that is now the AI move to done as well. So then one final time, I'm gonna come out of the get and I'm gonna get a destroy actor. So destroy actor like that. So once it has got to that location, it's gonna disappear like that. And out of this destroy actor, I'm gonna get another destroy actor. So destroy actor again. And now this time I'm gonna get a reference to the box trigger. So if I just do this again, then select the box trigger, trigger box there, drag and drop that in there and plug that into the target of the destroy actor. This just means we can't trigger it again once we've done it the first time. And so now this should work perfectly. So that should now be all the coding set up. So now one final step we need to do is actually create the nav mesh bounds for it to be able to walk. So over here in the left under place actors, we're gonna search for nav mesh bounds. So nav mesh bounds volume, put that in there. And we're just gonna scale it up to be how big we need it to be. So this is essentially where the AI is gonna be able to move. So we want this to be the correct space and size for the AI to move in. So essentially this green area here is where the AI can move, which is obviously where we want it to be. And if you don't have the green area, if you just press P, you should be able to toggle this. So P and this green area is where it can move. So if it's not green, or you don't see anything, then you want it to be green. So again, P is to toggle that. And then I'm actually also just gonna change the movement speed of this ghost. So I open up the blueprint, go to character movement, and go to the max walk speed. For you, it'll be default with 600. So I'm gonna set mine to 1200 or something a bit faster like that, you can customize that to be how fast or slow you want. So once you've done that, we can then test this out. So I hit play, we're gonna walk forwards. I got the box trigger, I walked through the box trigger, sorry. So it then played the sound effect, the ghost ran at me, and now it has also disappeared afterwards. So that works perfectly. So I'll show you that again. It's not there, I can't see it at all. I walk through the box trigger, it appears, and then it runs at me whilst playing that sound effect and disappears afterwards and so that works perfectly so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we wanted to do like i just said we have the box trigger we walk through it it plays a sound effect the ghost at the end of the hallway suddenly appears which we can't see anymore and then it runs at the player and disappears afterwards like that and then we also can't see anymore and we can't trigger this anymore to do it any more times like so so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.